This is what he told Semaphore in an interview out today. Quote, I have so many black friends that if I were a racist, they wouldn't be my friends. They would know better than anybody in fast. Greetings, fellow Americans. This is T-Pain USA. And welcome to another episode of the Really American T-Cast. So won't you come on in, grab a chair, put your feet up, and we'll have a nice visit and talk about stuff that really matters. Sound good? Well, alrighty then. Now, Trump swears up and down he's got so many black friends, and that alone proves he's not a racist. Well, ask yourself this. Have you ever known at least one person that's a high-functioning, bona fide racist? And how many times have you heard that lady or that fella say, I'm not a racist. I got lots of black friends. You know, as a matter of fact, thinking back, T-Pain recollects just about every person that he ever met that feels compelled to assure others that he's got lots of black friends also happens to be a racist. Now, actually, there are two things every racist will swear on a stack of Bibles about. One, the aforementioned, I got lots of black friends. And two, I am the least racist person. I can't even see the audience because it's so dark, but I don't care who's in the audience. I'm the least racist person in this room. Now, here's a mystery to ponder. Why do so many white supremacists support Donald Trump? Why do dyed-in-wool racists stand in line for hours just to vote for the least racist person ever? Now, T-Pain would be a rich fella if he had a quarter for every MAGA he ever heard take a solemn vow that they're the least racist person you'll ever meet. Now, Trump couldn't see anybody in that room, but if he had, he would have seen hundreds of faces showing mild surprise that he just accused them of being more racist than him. One of my favorite sayings is, stop blowing on the fur and get to the hide. Now, T-Pain's the kind of fellow that believes to fully understand somebody, you got to go back to the beginning explore their roots, and see what their childhood was like. Surely a fellow like Donald Trump, who has so many black friends, more than likely had a father that taught him open-mindedness and a deep, unwavering appreciation for equality, right? So let's see what old Donald Trump's father, Fred Trump, was like, shall we? Ask you about a New York Times report long ago, in 1927, that your grandfather, Donald Trump's father, Fred Trump, was arrested at a Ku Klux Klan riot in Queens, New York. The article subtitled Klan Assails Policemen. It reports that a thousand Klansmen and 100 policemen staged a free-for-all battle. It lists Fred Trump with his address as one of seven men who were arrested and arraigned for the assault. Well, that was a surprise. Or was it? It's sad to hear about any kid, Donald Trump included, being raised in a racist home. But there's a silver line into this cloud of bigotry. At least Trump grew up knowing exactly who the KKK was and what white supremacy was all about. So when he came of age, he could make an informed decision to reject racism outright. Trump's racist raisin actually gave him an advantage of being supremely informed, if you pardon the pun. Well, this way, if Trump was ever confronted about the KKK and white supremacy, he could speak as a man with authority on the subject, with an encyclopedia-like recall on the matter. Check this out. Donald Trump is facing new controversy today after he refused to condemn the KKK. Trump was endorsed Friday by KKK leader David Duke, and today on CNN, he was asked to disavow that endorsement. Will you unequivocally condemn David Duke and say that you don't want his vote or that of other white supremacists in this election? Well, just so you understand, I don't know anything about David Duke, okay? I don't know anything about what you're even talking about with uh, white supremacy or white supremacists. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Did, did he endorse me or what's going on? Because, you know, I know nothing about David Duke. I know nothing about white supremacists. And so you're asking me a question that I'm supposed to be talking about people that I know nothing about. It's a mystery, I tell you. I keep a copy of Hitler's speeches by my bedside table. But somehow, I managed to know nothing about Nazis, white supremacists, or virtually anything. As a matter of fact, when it comes to anything, I know nothing. Now, all T-Pain knows how to do is to be totally honest with you, and that's what he's going to be right now. Never cared much about politics till about 10 years ago. 
But anybody with two political brain cells to rub together knows who David Duke is. He's the grand wizard of the KKK who ran for office a bunch of times, always as a surprise, surprise, Republican. You don't need to be one of them brain scientists that know that anybody raised in a KKK family who claims he don't know who David Duke is, or the KKK for that matter, is hiding something. Now normally Trump saying he knows nothing would be entirely accurate, but in this case, that ain't exactly true. He does know one thing about Nazis and the KKK. When asked about the Nazi Klan rally at Charlottesville, he did manage to remember this. You had people in that group, but you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. We've all seen this clip a million gazillion times, so T-Pain ain't going to waste your time preaching to the choir. But it is totally fair to ask this simple question. How is it these very fine KKK and neo-Nazis are behind Trump 100%? Don't it seem odd to you that so many racists would be excited to nominate and elect the least racist person in the room? Now, despite what Trump may say, White supremacists have figured Trump out a long time ago. But you know who else has Trump figured out? Check this. Did you look around that room? The only black folks you see are the 20 or so gathered on stage. Folks, numbers don't lie. Detroit's African-American population is 79.8%. Now, in a town the size of Detroit with a population of 620,000 people, Trump was only able to get about 20 black folks to show up. The rest of that room was filled with white folks wearing red hats. Now, Trump thinks black folks are stupid enough to fall for his phony staged events, but they ain't, and they are wisely staying away from Trump in droves. Turn, turns out Trump should be saying, I have many, many black props. Folks, if, if you like what T-Pain's doing in these videos, just take a minute on the interwebs and go over to Amazon.com and check out T-Pain USA in books, and you'll find that T-Pain's got two political humor bestsellers available. Check them out. Have you heard the old expression, don't pay attention to what they say, pay attention to what they do? Well, that's the key to understanding Trump's real position on race, and more importantly, racism. Remember when the George Floyd protests swept our nation and the protesters turned out by the tens of thousands in Washington, D.C.? Trump's shirt tail didn't hit his hiney till he called out the U.S. military to protect the Capitol. Trump wanted his MAGA base to know exactly where he stood on black folks exercising their First Amendment rights. But switch gears to the January 6th, when Trump's Caucasian MAGA mob stormed the altar of American democracy, did he call out the military? No. Did he call out the National Guard? Heck no. Did he even bother to call for police backup? Never. So let's make this easy, shall we? We can sum up Trump's racism in just two photos and the terms he gives to each one. Peaceful protests. Thugs. Heroes. Animals. T-Pain don't know how to make it any clearer. But we're going to try anyway. As cruel as it sounds, if MAGAs were actually forced to sit down and read from Trump's favorite book, they'd know that Jesus said, He who is faithful in little is faithful in much. Now, in today's words, that simply means pay attention to the little things because they can tell you a lot about a person. Something caught T-Pain's eye that Trump published on his sorely misnamed True Social website, since Trump really is not known for either. There's a little meme about Trump's fascist cohort, Javier Milei, the Argentina's new president. Notice here the last bullet point where Trump praises what this little scamp's doing. Trump's signaling to his bat poop crazy base that he wants to end all diversity and inclusion, just like old Javier is doing down there in Argentina. And like Jesus said, this little morsel tells us all you need to know about Trump. Just like his other buddy, Victor Orban, Trump wants to transform America into a white Christian nationalist autocracy, where everybody that ain't lily white walks three paces behind the others on the social ladder. 
He wants to end government policy that protects minorities and gays. And folks, this ain't nothing than what that little Australian fella with the funny mustache tried. Is that enough? Or would you like another little says a lot example? Oh, look at my African American over here. Look at him. My, my African American. Trump's Freudian use of the word my implies ownership. Trump is signaling to his MAGA base that flies the Confederate flag right next to their Trump flags that he wants to return America to a time when white Americans can all say my African American and mean it. So folks, it's left for you to decide if Trump really has many, many black friends. But it is safe to say that with friends like Trump, black people don't need no enemies. T-Pain out.